Now, Woo, Donald Pitts. When I was very young, no more than seven or eight years old, my father told me about a murder that was committed when he was a young man. It happened in the town adjoining the town where we lived in Ohio. Now, in those days, a murderer was hanged out in broad daylight, and everyone was invited to witness the act and all the gruesome details went with it. It was an eager crowd that pushed forward, each wanting to be in on the moment of death, and my father managed to make his way up to where he could watch, and when he saw the rope adjusted around the man's neck, he turned away and hung his head and was embarrassed and humiliated the rest of his life that he could have had that much of a hand in the death of a fellow man. Now, my parents were not usual people. <laughs> they were uh, free thinkers in a valley of rock-ribbed religionists. The only Democrats among Republicans as far as the eye can see, and, well, the only intellectual. Would you believe that my mother thought that women should be allowed to vote? And she said so out loud as early as 1840. And I remember this very clearly. She never protested when my father kept me out past midnight in the hay wagon because she knew that beneath the hay in that wagon were slaves that my father was helping to escape from the south to the north, from slavery to freedom, along the underground railway. My father, he only worked enough odd jobs, a house painter, a carpenter, driving a hearse, to be able to buy his books. Hebrew, Greek, Latin, metaphysics, science, the law. He loved his books, and he loved for us to read them. If I became anything at all, I owe it to my father's patience and to his books. Well. To be honest about it, a little bit of hard work on my own part. When, when I was nine years old, my father sent me out on one of the hottest days I can never remember to hoe potatoes. I worked hard there for several hours. And I ran away from that hard work, went into the practice of law, and I haven't worked it uh -huh. since. <laughs> Why the law? Well, in Kinsman, every 4th of July, after Squire Allen had read the Declaration of Independence, which we all thought he had written it, because we read it. <laughs> well, he introduced this lawyer from the county seat. Now, I'd seen that lawyer's horse and buggy down in front of the hotel that morning. I thought how nice they looked and how much money the lawyer must make. And he was never afraid to stand up in public, and I remember his boots shine, always shine, like they had just been greased. <laughs> and he had, he had waved his arms really big and talked real loud, and the farmers would say, he's a really smart fellow. <laughs> He's a great man. That's why the law. <sighs> you know, I never have been too sure I made the right choice. The law's a bum profession that was generally practiced. Practical. 
practically devoid of ideas. Poverty stricken as to any true ideals at all. But I didn't find that out until it was too late to get out. My, my problem is that I enjoy and am fascinated by the idea of the law. The clash of minds, the people you meet. Why, you know, it's almost better than baseball. Mm -hmm. Although, there was this one afternoon in high school with my girlfriend watching, Jesse. It was the bottom of the ninth. We were one run down, two men on, two men out. And I stepped up to the plate like Casey, except I hit one over the grocery store that won the game. <laughs> Nothing will ever be better than that. Not even the monkey trial. Well, I, I never had much education. One year of college and one year of law at Ann Arbor. And in those days, a, a committee of attorneys would interview you for admission to the bar, and, and well, they were all good fellows who wanted to see you succeed. Nowadays, the bar association is about as eager to encourage competition as the Plumbers Union or the American Medical Association. <laughs> well, my, my first law job was uh, drawing up a contract for the trade of two horses. And for that, I got paid 50 cents by both sides. <laughs> With all that cash jingling in my pocket, I, I felt so flush and reckless that I asked Jesse to marry me. Guess it made her feel reckless enough that she decided to take a chance. <laughs> Prettiest girl you ever did see. Sweetest. Kindest. Uh, had a lot of small town in her. I guess so did I. We were happy together. Lived four years in Ashtabula, Ohio, and the buying and trading of horses was going on at such a rate that we were able to save up enough to buy a house. Five hundred dollars down. <laughs> Problem is the owner decided at the last minute that he didn't think we could make the installments. So he refused to sign over the deed. What well, made me so mad. I, I said, well, that's just fine. We, we were planning on moving away anyhow. Next morning, I was walking down the street. I saw this woman I never really particularly cared for. Well, how's our prominent lawyer today? Oh, fine. Uh, I just got a big new case. Well, that's just marvelous. Well, wait, here in Ashtabula? Well, no. Uh, as a matter of fact, in Chicago. Well, that's fantastic. Well, when do you try it? Well, as a matter of fact, tomorrow. Next morning, I was on the first train to Chicago. I had to. That woman would have seen me on the street. She'd have told everybody I was a liar, <laughs> which I was. But I came to Chicago with hay in my hair and a suit bought and fitted at the Ashtabula Hardware and Emporium. Some people say I've kept that look all my life. <laughs> you know, the reporters at the Scopes trial were giving me a hard time about my clothes. I said, look, fellas, I spend as much money on my clothes as you do. The only difference is I sleep in mine. <laughs> Chicago. Yeah, I came to Chicago at the saddest moment in that city's history. Its citizens had just demanded and been granted the death by hanging of four men that they called anarchists. Of all the men whose side I did not get to stand by until it was too late, the ones I regret the most, 
for the Haymarket anarchists. It started with the, the strike of 1890, 1864. Company police shot seven workers outside the McCormick plant. A protest meeting was called for Haymarket Square in Chicago. It was a peaceable meeting. About 10 o'clock, it started to rain. So people started drifting away. And there, there were only a few hundred people in the square when Captain Bonfield, acting directly against the mayor's orders not to bring force into the square that night, marched into Haymarket Square at the head of 160 uniformed policemen. We are peaceable, the speaker cried. The meeting was over. We are peaceable. At that moment, from the top one of the buildings surrounding the square, to this day, some lunatic, that to this day we don't know who, threw a dynamite bomb into the middle of the policemen, killing seven policemen and wounding 60 others. It brought about the death of the socialist movement and the eight-hour day as well. Eight men were arrested, authors, lecturers, printers, charged not with throwing the bomb, but with having the audacity to write that capitalism was the source of poverty, misery, and crime. The state of Illinois charged them with conspiring with a man unknown or men unknown manner unknown, in a place unknown, to throw the bomb. Evidence admitted by the police, or manufactured by the police, was admitted at trial. And the court admitted evidence, the articles that the defendants had written and instructed the jury that if they believed that the writing of the defendants had in any way influenced the men are men who threw the bomb, and they were justified in convicting them of murder. Four of them were hanged. One of them, the youngest, Louis Ling, he blew his head off by lighting down on a dynamite percussion cap in his jail cell. The other two were sentenced to long terms, and the people of Chicago deemed themselves satisfied. Still, Chicago was an extraordinary place, filled with life and excitement and, and good new friends like the great John Peter Atko who got me a job as the city's special assessment attorney. I didn't know what he meant either. Yeah. <laughs> Other than meant $60 a week.